both women's rights and women's suffrage were both really long roads. My grandma was born in 1941 and lived in a time period that showcased traditional gender roles. Her dad going to work and um, her mom managing the home. As she graduated high school and eventually started to grow into a mature adult, many groups of Americans continued to fight for expanded social and political rights. In 1972, after years of campaigning by feminists, Congress approved the Equal Rights Amendment to the Constitution, which reads, the quality of rights under the law shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of sex. From history.com, according to history.com, also Alice Paul wrote the ERA in 1923 and it was introduced to Congress every single year until 1972, when it finally passed but was unfortunately not ratified. It has been reintroduced to Congress every year since 1982. Diane was well into her 40s at that time, uh, but now let's discuss her early life. All right, can you state your name? My name is Diane Wendor. And your age? 79 years old. And where did you grow up? I grew up in a small town in the Upper Peninsula, Iron Mountain, Michigan. Okay. Were there any gender-based restrictions for women? Um, I don't know that we looked at it so much as restrictions. Um, when I went to school, we really didn't have any women's or girls' sports. Mm -hmm. But it also was an area that we got, we did a lot of outdoor yeah. things. We did a lot of skiing and ice skating. And in the summer, there was a good-sized lake there that we spent almost every day so I didn't ever feel restricted growing mm -hmm. up but the whole area didn't have like girls basketball or volleyball or yeah any kind of sport so it was okay. just commonplace yeah that's crazy um well were, were there responsibilities that like the woman held and the man held even like with your parents or like general societal expectations my uh, my mother worked my mother didn't work. My mother worked while during World War II, while my father was in Europe. My uh, during during the war, yeah. My mother worked in a grocery store, and my grandparents lived with us. Oh. And that's who really my first my first memories are of my grandparents taking care of me. Okay. Um, I think we kind of covered this already, but were there any laws that, you know, said women couldn't do this or could do this? No, not that I know of. Okay. Maybe there were, but I wasn't aware of it. It was a very um, free uh, childhood, and uh, even the school years, uh, you know, it, it's not like living in a city where you have restrictions. Yeah, um, where you have fears, it was just all. I always felt safe, really safe. That's good. Um, were women allowed to drive? Yes, if they were careful. Young women didn't have cars, and we drove our our dad's car, and and that's how it was looked at. Even though my mother drove, it was my dad's car. Okay. But it was very nice because gas was only fifty. A, a gallon we could we could put 50 cents in on Sunday afternoon and someone's car and spend the day driving around so oh that's that fun. fun so yeah. expensive now um and then another one with driving was was it normally like the male that did the driving like if you were like in a relationship yeah um what was like the stance on birth control you know it's such a controversial thing nowadays. Now it is, but in, when I was growing up, it just wasn't an issue. Um, you may have had a boyfriend, but it was not the kind of relations, relationships that young people have today. Yeah. Excuse me. Uh, what were or are the laws on the topic of women's reproductive rights and pregnancy? Like, was it... There again, it was a non-issue. Yeah. 
and, and it was something that was really never talked about. Yeah. Um, we didn't have any sex education classes in the school. Okay. Did you go to public school? I went to public school. Okay. Yeah, my sister and brother went to parochial school, but it wasn't, there was quite a, an age difference, so it yeah. wasn't built when, when I was in grade school and high school. Jeez, that's crazy. Um, was talking about things such as reproductive rights and pregnancy just something you were to keep private, or would you be looked upon weirdly, or? I guess I only knew one girl in, in our class that got pregnant during high school, and I think I told you about her piccolo solo when she fainted, and immediately the thought went to, oh, she must be pregnant, and she couldn't come back to school. Okay, yeah, that's one of my questions. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's very different than today. Yeah, I know, it's crazy. There are a lot of, I'm only 20, and there are a lot of girls I know that. But it wasn't stated that it, as, as friends, we knew, we knew that she couldn't come back because of school, but publicly, it could have been her parents. You know, it just wasn't... Yeah. Um, put in the school paper or something like Norma Jean isn't coming back because she got pregnant and she had to get married. Yeah. Next question was, if someone did get pregnant, what would happen? Were they sent away to have the child? Things like abortion, etc. Um, I don't think we ever heard the word abortion. It yeah. wasn't anything that was talked about. It, it, um, when I think about it, we were really, and I'll say dumb, um, we were really naive, I guess is what I would say, because we, we didn't think about those things, you know? Yeah. Life was um, weekends, you'd, you'd ski all day, and then you'd go up to the ice rink at night, and by the time you got done, you were so tired, you couldn't think of doing anything, at, at, you know, anything like that. So yeah. It was... Um, it was kind of an innocent life. Yeah, easier time. Yeah, much easier time. Yeah, I know that in a lot of like Catholic schools or whatever, the lady would be sent away to yeah. a new facility with. Yeah, so there weren't there weren't many. Yeah. And Norma Jean, like I said, was the only one that we knew for sure when yeah. it happened, and uh, it was it was sad when you think about it um, because they too wound up getting a divorce. Yeah. That's no good. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Which is really common now, but was divorce less common Oh, back much then? less. Yeah. Okay. I'll yeah. get to that in a few questions. Um, were you allowed to vote? I wasn't old enough to vote. Okay, next question. What was the legal voting age? You know, I'm not sure. I've if I voted the first time when we were married, when I was married. But I don't remember if it was 18 or 21. Okay. 21 was the legal age for everything else. 16 was the legal age for driving, if you had taken driver's training. Yeah. So I was 16 and so many hours and I had my license. Yeah. <laughs> I went immediately and got it the same day. I... Uh, I, I really, I'll have, well, I don't know who I could ask now. Maybe if some friends I could find out. But I did not vote until I was married. And my parents were not very political. They voted, but uh, politics wasn't a big topic in our yeah. house. Yeah. Um, how old is Gigi? My mother is 99 years old. She'll be 100 in March. That means your grandma would have been alive before women had the right to vote. Mm-hmm. Had like, do you ever remember that being a topic of conversation? My 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 mother's parents came from Quebec, Canada. They were French Canadian, mm -hmm. and they learned English when they came to the United States. Yeah, and they were totally apolitical. They 
they were simple people. They were they yeah. were wonderful people. I had the best grandparents ever. I mean, there was such an abundance of love. Me too. Yeah, yeah. It it's um. But I can't ever remember them talking about who the president was yeah. or or voting. But I think I I think that that was maybe just the town. You know, the, yeah. the area. We weren't near a city. Green Bay was the nearest city. Yeah. And Marquette. Um, Michigan. Mich if, if you know anything about Upper Michigan, it's divided. Um, the capital is downstate. Mm -hmm. So when you lived in Upper Michigan, you were just kind of off there on your own. Yeah. So you didn't know as much about the politicians as you do today. I mean, today we know way too much about yeah, politicians. Yeah. Do you think it's important to vote? Oh, you know how I think it's important to vote. And most of all, what I had talked to you about before you voted was researching, mm -hmm. making sure that you knew all the things that were important to you, yeah. how your candidate felt about those things. Totally. What was one thing that frustrated you about like being a woman when you grew up? You know, anything from like not being able to play in sports in high school or like an unfair you disadvantage. You don't miss what you don't have. I mean, there had true, never been true. girls volleyball or basketball. Or, yeah. You know, you had gym. Yeah. And you played kickball or you know some silly thing. And yeah. It, those things really weren't issues. Because you'd never had it. Yeah, you didn't, you know. It'd, it'd be different if you lived somewhere else and had all those things and then mm -hmm. moved to an area and there was none of that. Um, was the housewife lifestyle promoted? And, like, what did it mean? Like, did people look down upon that? Or did it, you know, it, it showed that, you know, you had money or no, status? No, it never or, was common. Okay. Was it common? Yeah, and, and it was... It's not a profession, but it was an honored position in the home. Um, yeah. No, I didn't ever feel like my mother was looked down or upon or any of my friends' mothers. Mm -hmm. I, I had a large group of friends growing up, you know, yeah. when you're in a small town. Well, you know, but it's yeah. smaller than Grafton. Yeah. Know? And um, so all, all of... I don't think, none of my friends' mothers were. One of my friends' dad was the superintendent of schools. Yeah. And his, and her mother had uh, taught. But most of my friends' mothers were kind of in the same position mine was. Yeah. Um, were there equal job opportunities for men and women? No. Well, you know, actually, looking back, I'm, I'm thinking of a 14, 15, 16-year-old girl. Mm -hmm. So there may have been job opportunities that I didn't know about. Yeah. But my first job was selling ribbon in the dime store, in the dime store, selling ribbon by the yard. Yeah. And you, you know me, math was never my forte. <laughs> Same. <laughs> so... Um, figuring out when they'd say I want so much ribbon, oh, I would just really... Oh, that would make me nervous. <laughs> I was so nervous until I, yeah, I'd write everything down and I'd figure it out. Yeah, know? yeah. Um, did the jobs pay the same? Um, or was there like a gap? So like if a woman was given the same job a man held? I think there must have been a gap because women just didn't hold the kind of jobs men did. Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, would women get promotions, or was that less common? My mother had one friend who was, um, what would you call her today, um, an executive secretary. She, she, there was a large construction company in Iron Mountain, and she had a. a a very good job there, mm -hmm. and um, she was a very smart woman, and um, I would say she, of all the people that I knew, she probably had the best job, other than teachers. Yeah.
And that was the main profession, teachers are nurses. You had two choices. Yeah. No, one thing that always interested me was my other grandma. I actually worked at MATC for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she told me a few days ago that by the time she left, her job description was 10 pages long because she, you know, kept adding things or taking over new things. But she would never be the one to, you know, get the pat on the back. It was always her supervisor who did because she was a secretary, um, kind of. I don't know what her exact position was, but... So it was like things like that that made me curious. Yeah, you you would never fit in the way I grew up. If if, if tonight you went to bed and you woke up suddenly and you were in Iron Mountain and you were Diane, and but who you are now personally, mm -hmm. you would never. Is that a bad thing, or is no, it just that yeah, I grew up in a, like a different? If you grew up in a totally different era, you're much. Uh, more worldly than we ever were. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know so much more yeah. than we ever were. Sometimes knew. it's not always a good thing. <laughs> well, no, it is a good thing. It really is a good thing. I like seeing the way you're growing up, and I like seeing the things you do and the things that, that you know that I didn't at that young age. Yeah. Was it common for women whole jobs? We kind of discussed that already, but... Yeah. I think if you wanted a job, um, there weren't very many stores in Iron Mountain. Like people, yeah, really like during prom time or something, you would have to go to Green Bay probably mm -hmm. to buy your prom dress or something. You know, they just yeah, yeah, weren't that many jobs available. But I think if you really wanted one, you could find one. Yeah, um, if women weren't working, what did they spend a lot of time doing then? A lot of cottage industry. Mm -hmm. We had a very large uh, Italian population on Iron Mountain. Yeah. And some of these women would make homemade ravioli and sell them by the dozen. And yeah. then they would make the, the red sauce that went with it and sell that by the quart. Even even after we were I was married and we went home with our children, we would buy raviolis and pasties to, yeah. to take home. So there was, I would say, a lot of cottage industry. Okay. And women that, that did sewing. and Yeah. What was the dress code like in school and at work for women? Were you allowed to wear pants? No. No pants? No. <laughs> so no. was it like a dress or skirt every day? Dresses or? and skirts every day. And men, and men white bucks. I don't know what that is. They were white buck shoes. Didn't you ever hear that? White buck? Hear white no. buck? And I used to go in my dad's drawer and get his Argyle socks to wear with my white bucks to school. Oh my gosh. I know I was looking through your book and, and uh, seeing the way we all looked. Oh my gosh, it was funny. But all of the dress, never. And, and the boys, I think they could wear jeans by the time we were seniors, but up until then, it had to be like khakis or something. Okay. Um, how far into your life did you go with that, or was there a certain time you remember being able to wear? All through high school, you had okay. to wear dresses or skirts. Yeah. So when you get out of high school, did you just wear whatever you wanted then? Mm -hmm. I was going to say you're wearing pants right now. <laughs> we, could, um, we could wear jeans, like if we went to movies and things. We could okay, so out of school. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. But to school, it was all dresses. That surprises yeah. Um, Were women allowed to work in government or politics? Were there any congresswomen or...? Not that I can remember. Okay. I feel like that's been more of like a recent, yeah. you know, maybe in the last 10 years that... Uh, yeah, no, I, I don't remember ever. Um, I had one friend um, who lived with her mother and three aunts. That they were her mother's mm -hmm. sisters, and her mother and father were divorced. And they were very political mm -hmm. and very smart. Yeah. Well educated women. And when I'd go to her house, it was just like, wow. 
and love to listen to them talk. Yeah. Because, you know, we didn't talk about politics at our house, so. Yeah, yeah. Huh, and I could ask them questions. If I yeah, wanted, yeah. But I really didn't even know what kind of questions to ask because. Um, it was so new. It, yeah, in government classes, um, we're it's pretty basic. Yeah. No, I remember. I feel I felt that way too. And uh, you know, I graduated in twenty eighteen, and you know, I've taken and so many. I graduated many. in nineteen fifty nine. Well, no, like I remember telling you about all the indigenous stuff and that's like a whole other side of history that right. public school doesn't teach you. Yeah. So it's really interesting. Um, with that being said, what were the education norms? Did women regularly attend college or was it kind of like get married? And um, I think about, maybe, maybe not quite half went away to school. Okay, because I know when Emily graduated, she said a lot of the girls don't don't go. Yeah. And there's only like, what, 20 people in her graduating class? But yeah, so. she's in a very different position. Um, yeah. Our graduating class maybe had 130. Okay. I think mine was probably around there, maybe a smidge bigger. Yeah, but I think the, uh, proportionately, a lot more kids went to college from your class than Yeah, that. yeah. I think it's definitely like an expectation now, even if you're going to drop out, yeah. that you have to go. And in, in the town that I lived in, there, there were maybe two things, two places that you'd consider industry. Mm -hmm. it, the, the area had been a, a mining area. Yeah. So it was a poor, a poorer area. Mm -hmm than you're used to, or I'm used to now. Yeah, yeah. It, it was very different. Um, what was the stigma surrounding LGBTQ, or two women together as a couple? Never, didn't know it existed when I was in high school. Yeah, what about like later in life? Later in life? I didn't really have a problem with it, I didn't have yeah. any issues with it. Yeah. Um, was there in like society that like if you were t that it was a, like an unspoken thing? Um, you know, did I know anybody who may have been in high, well, school, even high school? Well, <laughs> obviously you know someone. Yeah. But um, everybody knows someone. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I know people are really open about it nowadays. No, they never would have been open about it. Okay. Never. That must have been hard. Yeah. <sighs> Were there any differences between how white and African American were treated? We did not have an African American person living in the town I lived in. Wow. That's crazy. That is crazy because um, I had, in, my aunt and uncle lived in Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. And the first time we visited, when, you know, I obviously could tell the difference, we went downtown. And it was like being in a new world. Yeah, I mean, you knew from pictures and things that this existed, but never, um, and I still don't know if, if there are any families that live there now. Yeah. Yeah, that's living, you know, moving from your little, your little group, you, your you small little culture to insulated. a bigger, yeah, yeah, more vast. Very insulated. I know, I know, Ethan always says that. You know, I've been so sheltered because I live in Grafton, which is true. You know, everyone is pretty much the exact same. There's not a ton of diversity. Yeah. I mean, in the last few years there has been, but it's just part of not living in a major city. Right. But was there any, like, when you went to Milwaukee or even, you know, trip to Green Bay, could you tell that there were differences in how they were treated, like any segregation at all yet? Well, there definitely was segregation, but at the age I was at, I would you didn't understand. That. I mean, to me, it was just a, a, a phenomenon that, you know, these people would just, like, if we went to the zoo, mm -hmm. um, and, and we would see uh, African-American people there, and it was just different. It was just something that you weren't used to, and it was different. Yeah, yeah. didn't ever feel any 
anything different towards them. Yeah. Not in me, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, was divorce allowed? Did did you have to split assets if you got divorced? I know that prenups are not more of a thing of our current society. I don't know what the, what the laws were in Michigan at the time, and I really, um, none of my friends' parents were divorced. Mm -hmm. A couple of them had lost a parent they had yeah. you know, from illness or something. But I did not know anybody who whose parents were divorced. Yeah. I really led a sheltered life. And I'm thinking, as we're saying this, how sheltered it really was. Yeah, I also feel, though, like it was more common to, you know, work through things versus just saying I'm done and, you know, walk away. Well, and economically, it wasn't always feasible. Yeah. Because we're, what I was telling you about the industry, those probably would have been more white-collar jobs mm -hmm. in those two different places. But the rest were, like my dad, um, worked for the gas company, so mm -hmm. you know his his was basically a blue collar job. Yeah, and most of my friends' kids had blue collar jobs. Yeah, because there just weren't that many white collar jobs. Yeah, yeah, totally. That makes complete sense. Um, did people look down on women who were divorced or widowed? No. Not that I could have, that I could pick out anybody that, my best friend, my kindergarten friend, Jen, mm -hmm. her dad died when we were in fifth grade, and um, he had been a banker, he worked at the bank, and uh, they had a, a good sized house, and her mother actually took in boarders, and nobody thought anything of it. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it was just a way of life. Yeah. Um, was there a stigma around being a single mother or having the baby out of wedlock? I only know, like, two people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, I'm really not a good, a good subject for this because my, my life was a lot different than it is today. I know, but that's the point. <laughs> yeah. Um, what is one thing you think we could work to change in the realm of women's rights? Or oh, there's a lot of things <laughs> that we could work to change. Yeah. A lot of things. I mean, I basically have had a really great life. Mm -hmm. And I've been able to do anything that I wanted to do. Yeah. And... Um, I'm, you know, there's no complaints in my life. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. If I can think of a good complaint, I'd give you one. Um, if you could give one piece of advice to the future generation of women, what would it be? Honey, I give you advice every other day. <laughs> I know. But, I mean, to, like, the gender as a whole, you know, I feel like... Um, you know what? The most important thing is be true to yourself. Mm -hmm. And you, I like how you, um, when, when you make a decision, you investigate before you make the decision. Mm -hmm. You don't do things willy-nilly and jump into things. Yeah, it's hard to do that. I know. It's hard for you to make a decision. But yeah, I'm a really bad decision maker. No, you're not a bad decision maker, and I'd rather have you <coughs> take your time yeah. and investigate the way you do. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Of course, I'm a little biased. But. <laughs> All right. Um, anything else you'd like to add? No. You, you really, you, you brought me uh, down memory lane a little bit today. And... Uh, I've had it pretty darn good. I had a very good life. Uh, uh, just a, a good childhood. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for letting me interview you. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> okay. Can you please state your name, age, and where you grew up? 
Uh, my name is Ethan Taylor. I'm 22 and I grew up in Rockford, Illinois. All right. Um, so growing up in Rockford, uh, were or are there any gender-based restrictions for women? Um, I mean, outside of just the normal ones, no. Just like having to deal with things like proprietary biased things in society. There hasn't been anything like out of what... Law-wise. Law Law-wise, yeah. No. Okay. Um, are there certain res- responsibilities that the woman holds and that the man holds, like, say, like, in a relationship? Um, no. I mean, being 22, I kind of grew up in the movement where a lot of things were, you know, either a 50-50 split or gender norms weren't necessarily norms anymore. Um, everything is kind of... More progressive. Different, more progressive, different relationship to relationship. Totally. Um, are women allowed to drive? Women are allowed to drive. Thank okay. God, because I hate driving. So sometimes <laughs> I get, uh, hand out my girlfriend to drive. That'd be great. Um... What is the stance on birth control? Um, Law-wise, in Illinois, it is very liberal. So um, outside of, you know, it's kind of just if you need it, you can have access to it for the most part. Obviously, some people are still at a severe disadvantage when it comes to that. Yeah. But um, it's not something that people in the government of Illinois are like, no, women shouldn't have birth control. They shouldn't have access to it. Yeah. It's obviously not free, maybe even if it should be. Um, I'm not necessarily the the most well-known, well-versed on that issue, but, you know, it is accessible to most women. Okay. Um, I guess to narrow that question down, um, is it is it a topic that people can openly discuss without being looked down upon? Uh, it depends. Some people still to this day are going to be, like, uh, kind of negative towards... I mean, like, kids our, a- our age. Oh, kids um, our age, yeah. I feel like most people are progressive enough to be like, oh, yeah, yeah let's talk about this. Yeah, so. okay, totally. Um, totally. What are the laws on the topic of women's reproductive rights of pregnancy? Um, in Illinois, as far as I know, uh, abortion is legal. Uh, I think that it usually goes state by state, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Obviously, they've tried at you know a national level to implement rules and laws. Um, in Illinois, I know it's legal, and whether it's frowned upon or not is kind of person to person. Yeah, for sure. Um, if someone were to get pregnant, Say, in your high school, I know you went to private school. <laughs> um, what would happen? Were they sent away to have the child uh, remain in school? Uh, were they forced to end the pregnancy? Um, um, growing up in private school, I went to private school for all, well, 12 years, first through, but I also was there pre-K, three. So I was in private school for 15 years. And uh, the people, there was a couple people who did get pregnant in my high school throughout, you know, my middle school and high school years. And they were all, uh, sent, they were um, not, I don't want to say expelled, they were asked to leave from the school. Okay. Um, but on the flip side of that, the guys who were involved were not, so. Are you allowed to vote? I am allowed to vote. Or I should say, are women allowed to women vote? Women are allowed to vote. Uh, do you think a lot of women show up to the polls? Uh, this year, more than ever, I think that uh, the numbers, the sheer mass amount of people who voted, whether by mail or in person, uh, prove that, yeah, women do show up a lot to the polls, along with, you know, other people, whether it's the majority of a certain race, a minority of race, it doesn't really matter. Lots of people showed up and showed out to vote. Yeah. Um, what's the legal voting age? Uh, 18. 18 is the legal voting age. What is one thing that frustrates you about laws regarding women, if there are any? Um, just how kind of there's this connotation that most of um, Congress, House of Senate, or the House, <laughs> Congress and the Senate are mostly older white men. Obviously, after this election, that's not all going to be true. We obviously had some more of minority candidates elected, but kind of how we let, um, one, like, I don't know, however many people it is, like 530-something people dictate, you know, laws for oh, oh, 300 million people. I think that that is yeah. kind of not the way to go about it. I think a lot of things at a local level can be taken case by case, obviously not necessarily in bigger, bigger cities, but, you know, I live in a city of 100,000 people. Like, I feel like a lot of things can be taken case by case, and yeah. especially with the different counties we have here. There's three different counties of this kind of area. Yeah. Um, was or is the housewife lifestyle promoted, and what do you think it means if you're a housewife? I don't necessarily think the housewife life is really promoted anymore, especially with the cost of living. Yeah. I think back in the day, that was kind of a reason why a lot of people were like, oh, yeah, the wife can stay home and raise the kids because the things were so much cheaper. Now, you really, unless you have a really high-paying job, you can't really afford that as a couple. So I think that also not necessarily, I'm not saying that's the only reason yeah, that, yeah. that it's not like that anymore, but, you know, um, I think that it's kind of gone out the window with times and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, yeah. kind of got to go. No, with. I think it definitely, nowadays, if you're a housewife, it means you've got money. 
but sometimes you also feel like you can be looked down upon that you're not yeah, outworking. Yeah, no, people tend to think, yeah, like, I've, people are like, oh, you're not the breadwinner, or your husband, like, that's just stupid. Yeah. Like, if you knew how Sexism hard it was... Sexism alive today. <laughs> if you knew how hard it was to take care of children and also make sure a house is clean, also do all this stuff around the house, mm-hmm. some people would be like, no, I'd rather work the 9 to 5 job any yeah. day of the week. I know I would. Is it common for women to hold jobs? Uh, yeah, now nowadays I would say so. I think it's kind of expected that everybody in a relationship or even in the world pretty much has a job. Like, yeah, yeah. You see people, like, I know you, you work, you've been working since you were 14. Like, mm-hmm. some people have to start early and they don't go until they, they don't stop until they die. And so I think it's just kind of, you know, with how bad the, the fl- inflation and stuff is nowadays, that's kind of just expected that you have a job. And if yeah. you don't, there's a negative connotation around that. Yeah. Uh, what was the dress code like in school and at work for women? I know you went to a private school, so obviously there were uniforms, but do you want to describe uh, what a women's uniform was like compared uh, to a man's? In private school, uh, women were expected to wear, well, we kind of all had to wear a polo. That's mm-hmm. just what it was. So everybody was wearing a polo. Um, they had to wear skirts. We had men and boys, I guess, had to wear uh, khaki pants or shorts. That's, you know, you had to yeah. pick one or the other. Obviously, uh, if you were out of dress code, they didn't like it i know we used to have non-uniform days and one of the rules was no yoga pants yeah and there was a lot of uh hubbub and fighting about that um you know obviously i don't think that it's necessarily an important rule to have i don't think you need to tell women to um be like hey you can't wear this because it's not your place Mm -hmm. um but at the same time you know if you go to private school you're kind of in a bubble per se and you kind of have to follow the rules you don't really have a choice i got in trouble all the time for being out of uniform because i i like to wear sweatshirts and stuff so i would always be in a sweatshirt and i got in trouble all the time i have my ears pierced i got in trouble for that because men weren't allowed to have their ears pierced so i think yeah going to a very you know conservative type of school um things necessarily weren't necessarily like tougher for men and women on dress code just dress code that's all i'm saying on dress code um but were the rules fair for everybody i wouldn't say that either i don't think so probably not Obviously, in public school, you know. Public school is different. You hear about it all the time. The shoulder thing. Yeah. The, you know. Obviously, shorts women would get in trouble at my school if their shorts were, like, or if their shirt was, like, obviously too short. Like Yeah, stuff like that. Um, like, nobody was walking around with a ruler going, up oh, two inches, get your butt to the principal's office. But, you know, mm-hmm. if it was, like, clearly way too short. Like, if I, if I showed up in short shorts, too, that were clearly way too short, I would get in trouble, too. Yeah. Um... Are women allowed to work in the government or in politics? Yes, they are. Women are very much allowed to do that. Uh, what are the education norms nowadays? Do women regularly attend college? Uh, yes, women regularly attend college now. Um, I would. A lot of colleges actually are probably more, more, you know, predominantly uh, women. women because you know a lot of men still have that uh, tendency to go into trade jobs instead of women. Women. That's something that probably could be expanded as jobs for women in, you know, trade. Uh, schools and stuff like that um, and also like the military military is commonly men too to allow mm-hmm. you know young men choose that route so. yeah uh, what's the stigma surrounding LGBTQ rights and what's the stigma around two women together as a couple per se um, I think that you know for the most part most people kind of carry the belief that it's okay I obviously yeah um, you still have some kind of backlash from the older generation and also you know some even younger more conservative uh religious groups yeah you'd have people saying it's not okay but i think if you asked you know probably 99 of 100 people on the street they'd be yeah. like yeah go for it heck yeah whatever makes you happy i know that's how i feel yeah follow-up question um like if you knew two people man men or women that were together as a couple was it or if someone knew that uh, they were gay or lesbian, was it, is it something that they felt like they had to keep quiet? Or do you think that people are really open about that stuff? I think people are very open about that stuff nowadays. Obviously, there's still some people, you know, based on, like, their upbring- upbringing yeah. and their parents might not be as inclined to being open. And I know that, you know, that's not necessarily my place to ever tell people who aren't, you know, clearly, like, yes, I am out as a gay man, a, a lesbian woman, a transgender individual. I think that, you know... Yeah, yeah, it's like I said earlier, case by case thing. But I think most people would be like, "Oh, okay, yeah, it's, I'm yeah. Like accepting of this because you know I realize that love is love." Yeah, um, what were the differences between how white women and black women are treated? Um, examples: job opportunities, education, marriage, wealth, transportation. Like, do you see any of the differences? Like, 
or any differences like that living in a more diverse area than, per se, Ozaki Town, where I live. Um, I don't necessarily see it firsthand. Obviously, mm-hmm. I know it exists. Um, I do live in a town that, you know, is very mixed culturally. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, you hear stories about it. My mom works in staffing, so she kind of sees it all the time, um, you know, where people won't hire people specifically because they're women or people won't hire people specifically because of their, you know, race. And, you know, yeah. women have it hard enough, but being a black woman is just you know just way way harder because you have to deal yeah. with not only the gender uh, oh. stigmas but also the racial stigmas as well yeah and, uh, it's kind I of get... the whole um unearned advantage versus unearned disadvantage yes so you being a white male you obviously have an advantage over me a white female even though we both ha- share the same advantage that we're white mm-hmm. you share the advantage that um you are a male yes uh, is divorce allowed Yes, divorce is allowed. Is it, it common? Is. <laughs> yeah, very common. <laughs> would someone, would some would say 50% common, yes. Um, is it more of a norm, I guess, nowadays to split assets? I would say so, yeah. I mean, like I feel prenup like, stuff, so that's a lot yeah, more common. I feel like it kind of depends on the certain, certain things and certain relationships. I feel like women obviously have an advantage when it comes to custody. Which yeah. is due to, you know, kind of gender bias built in society that women are mm-hmm. still the caregiver of this, that, and third. Yeah. Um, and men are kind of given, you know, maybe more of the fiscal assets. Like, yeah. Well, actually, I don't, I don't really know. As somebody not a child of divorce, luckily, um, yeah. I don't really have experience in that aspect. I know. It interests me that um, prenups are so common nowadays. It's most of the time it's the male who puts forth the idea of a prenup because in oh, most cases they make prenup. more money. We want. And do people look down on women who are divorced or widowed? I'm sure some people still do. I feel like, like I've said before, this I live in a fairly um, open-minded time where it's not mm-hmm. necessarily something where people are like, oh, you're divorced, gross. Yeah, like, I feel like it was definitely mother, something it's kind that of... was tiptoed around in the past. Yes. Um, was or is there a stigma surrounding being a single mother or having a baby out of wedlock? Uh, yes, I. you see it all the time still that people are like, oh, okay, this person had a baby out of wedlock, they're this that and the other they're you know bad names galore um but you know everybody goes through different things you know someone you yeah. thought you loved could turn out to be a, a bad person someone that you know mm-hmm. accidents happen you know it's just yeah. kind of you know and do you think things like that are more or like the mean part of that you know people you know talking and whatnot is more commonly put on the woman than the male even oh, though it took equal I feel like People are so quick to focus on, you know, a, a girl having a baby out of wedlock that they lose focus of the man that's part of this because it takes two people to make a baby. You can't just... Yeah. What is one thing that you think we could work to change in the realm of women's rights? Um, I think that a good start would be, you know, I believe that change starts locally. So mm-hmm. uh, making sure that more women are represented in, you know, government uh, positions of power and companies. I think that that's a good place mm-hmm. to start. I think that we get really lost in the the shuffle of change has to happen immediately right now and that's mm-hmm. just kind of not how change works change starts it takes small time. and it builds mm-hmm. and it builds and it builds um and so i think that you know starting locally making sure women are represented government positions of power different things around you know your city or town would be a good place to start yeah um if you could give one piece of advice for a future generation of women based on your experience what would it be? Even though I'm not your, I know you're not a woman. Okay, you know? yeah. But just Obviously seeing... I'm not a woman, but having, you know, really strong women role models in my family. You know, my mom, my grandma's having, working in a place where I'm the only guy. And so I have, you know, a female boss. I have a female head trainer. I have a very strong independent girlfriend. I get all these things. I have all these female role models. Um, you know, I think it's just to continue to fight for what you believe in. Continue to kind of, you know, fight for change. Don't let just what society has to say stop you obviously if you live in this box where people's other people's words kind of stop you from achieving what you want to achieve you're never going to achieve what you want to achieve so really just making sure that you know that you know gender has nothing to do with what you can be just as a little um reflection here i found both diane and ethan's responses to be really eye-opening um you know the fact that my grandma you know they had never even heard the word abortion um which is kind of crazy because I feel like with how big of a topic it was in this year's election um, that there had to be like one day where things just changed and people really thought you know an abortion was the answer to the problems or they considered this a real option 
same with birth control there being not so much a paradigm shift but a shift in society where it wasn't acceptable or it wasn't normal but now a majority of high school age kids you know are using birth control and they're talking about it with their friends openly um so in many ways we've progressed in a great direction but you know as I, as i'm about to say there are many things that could still be worked on um for instance, you know, the wage gap, obviously, as Ethan said, he doesn't believe that, you know, that's present at all companies, which I'm sure is true. Um, you know, there are many companies now looking to hire women. Um, we live in a very progressive time, and I think, you know, that with living in a progressive time, um, women are only going to infiltrate more fields, and that's really great. According to Pew Research, 100 years after the 19th Amendment was ratified, about half of Americans say granting women the right to vote has been one of the most important milestones in advancing the position of women in the country. Still, a majority of U.S. adults say the country hasn't gone far enough when it comes to giving women equal rights with men. Even as a large share thinks there have been progress in the last decade, according to a new Pew Research Center survey. After conducting this interview, I believe there are still many things we can work towards to change in the future. We can work for fair and equal pay, eliminating the glass ceiling, um, getting rid of stigmas surrounding being a single mother or having a baby out of wedlock, and together we can work for equal rights.